Hi everyone, I'm Wade Appleby, one of the sales engineers here at Panda, and today we're going to be taking a brief look at the whitelist control available within Adaptive Defense. Due to the fact that we will block executables during classification, there may be certain scenarios where you want to allow these unknown executables or applications to run. This is accomplished very easily through the Ether platform. Once a program or executable gets blocked, an alert will be sent via email, and you'll be able to see that within the security dashboard. As you can see right here, Currently blocked programs being classified, six blocked programs. From here, we can drill down into the block and determine if we want to whitelist it during the classification or allow it to remain blocked until it gets classified and is either allowed to run because it's been deemed goodware or obviously prevented from executing across our entire customer base because it's now been considered badware. Once we make the decision to whitelist, we'll be able to see the list of programs that have been allowed by the administrator. So, if I come in and I take a look at, say, SOS.DLL, I say that this is good. I know that I use this program, um, and I know that this is a known good for me, even if it's unknown to Panda, and I want to allow it to run during the classification process. So I can see right here the currently blocked program is being classified. It's looking at the individual hash. I can see the protection mode. I can see the likelihood of being malicious, the date, and I can view the history of any previously blocked items. Now, to unblock it, I drill down again. And I can see the program activity, I can see the source, and you can see unblock right here. This unblock will allow it to run across the entire environment, no longer having to worry about you know, doing an individual computer whitelist. I'm able to whitelist this across the entire environment during the classification process. Once we make that decision, we'll be able to see that within the list of the programs allowed by the administrator, as we can see right here, and there's three different categories. One being classified, three pups, six malware. So even if you accidentally whitelist a piece of malware or a potential one of program, no matter what, once that gets classified as badware, it'll be removed across your entire environment. So you don't have to worry about a potential infection because we will make sure it gets removed off of that whitelist. And if we drill down, we'll be able to see these individually, exactly what they are the history, if we want to remove any, and we can also change the behavior, as you can see up here. If a program on this list is reclassified as malware by our lab, it'll be removed from the list and prevented from running. Panda can also ingest uh, digital signatures from company software that we have not identified before, which will allow it to make it easier for any updates, any new versions that come out that won't get blocked because they look unknown, because that digital signature has now been added into our list you are able to visualize both the programs allowed by the administrator and the programs blocked by the administrator as the new version uh, that will be rolling out uh, later this month will allow you to block individual applications as well based upon the name or based upon the hash. And then at the end of the year, uh, going into Q1 of 2020, we will also be rolling out full application whitelisting where you are able to whitelist based upon the software name, the developer, and the hash as well. So you can pre-whitelist applications to make sure that you don't have to worry about them ever getting blocked in the first place. Uh, again, my name is Wade Appleby. I'm one of the sales engineers here at Panda, and I'd like to thank you for taking a brief look at the whitelist control available within Adaptive Defense.